So when we look at life, we tend to look at differences is easy to see, but, but if you're all alive, you all share something. So how are living things alike? Well, all living things share these four uh, uh, common truths. One is that everything that's alive needs energy and it needs nutrients. Energy so we can move around, nutrients is the physical things that you're made up of, the actual molecules and, and atoms that make you up. You need those, right? And then you need energy to get them moving. You can sense and respond to change. Everything can, everything that's alive. Uh, everything that's alive uses DNA and they pass that DNA to their offspring. And then all living things evolve. Because you're using DNA and passing it on to your offspring, that DNA is not a perfect copy when it goes from you to your offspring. Um, so lots of times it's um, uh, uh, very different. It's why you don't look like your parents, but you look similar to them, and why your brothers and sisters don't look exactly like you. Uh, but it's a change in the genetics between generations, and that is the definition of evolution. And all things that are alive do that because, because they all use DNA. So a bacteria, a mushroom, a tree, a dolphin, and Peter Griffin, they are all alive, and they all share these things in common. Um, so looking at each one in turn, so organisms require energy and nutrients. So energy. We all like to eat. I know I do. And I used to think growing up, well, I went in the kitchen and made that sandwich by myself, so I, I made it myself, so I must be a producer. I produced that sandwich. Well, that's not the same. Making it yourself is not the same kind of making it here. In this instance, they're actually uh, producers. This is things that go through things, uh, a process called photosynthesis, using light to make energy. When it's lunchtime, you don't walk outside into the courtyard, stand in the sunlight for 10 minutes, and then go, hmm, that was good, and walk back in. You're not photosynthetic, okay? So you can't make glucose by yourself. So how do we get it? Well, we're not producers. We are consumers. So consumers are going to... Um, eat other things to get the energy out of them because they can't make the energy themselves. All right, so they can't make their own food, get the energy they feed on, the, on other organisms. And of course, animals are a good example. So this is either the world's luckiest uh, killer whale or the world's unluckiest penguin. But either way, it's a good description of uh, uh, part of the food chain. Uh, so what else do we need besides energy? You need nutrients. When little kids are growing up, many of you probably know this, that uh, they don't exactly want to eat the best things for them. They want to eat sweet stuff, or they want to eat chicken nuggets or french fries every single day. And while it's delicious, it lacks some of the atoms that they need to make their body. So what do we give them in, uh, in addition to make sure they get in balanced nutrition? Uh, well, we give them vitamins. Things like uh, minerals, a, vitamins A, B, uh, D, um, uh, all kinds of stuff. And it's good for things that we need. Like you need iron, so you take a Flintstones vitamin that has lots of iron in it. Why do we need iron? Well, it's a core component of our blood. The hemoglobin in our blood is based on iron. Um, that's why blood has an, uh, kind of a, um, a, a penny taste or a, um, uh, a, like tastes like a nail if you ever put a nail in your mouth. Um, but that's what we need. We need those. Growing up, we had a tree in our yard that um, uh, often would get sick during the drier parts of the month. And we don't, my, my mother was always like, what's wrong with, with this tree? Like it's doing fine. Then this type of the year, it, it really starts to look bad. And it wasn't fall, it wasn't shedding leaves or anything. It's like in the middle of the summer. My dad said it needs it needs a Flintstone vitamin, essentially. And he went and got a nail, ungalvanized nail, and uh, he nailed it into the tree. And the tree never had the problem anymore. And essentially what it was is that the soil didn't have enough iron in it. And by putting the uh, nail into the tree, just the flow of the water uh, up, the, up the bark of the tree was washing enough iron off the nail to supply it with what it needed. So he gave it to the Flintstones vitamin. Um, and it was great for the it was great for the tree. So when we talk about energy, we, we kind of touch base on the food chains and food webs. So this is a food chain. Here's a food web. Kind of easy to see. A food chain is one link to another. And so it looks like a chain. There's no many branches. It's just one one branch. A food web looks like a spider web. Okay. How do functionally how do these work for us? Well a food web shows what could eat what a food chain shows what did eat what, like what did the mouse eat? Well, this mouse ate this grasshopper. This grasshopper ate this grass. What did the owl eat? Well, he ate the mouse, okay? But over here, we would say like, well, what can the fox eat? Well, he could eat the chipmunk, he could eat the rabbit, and he, or he could eat the mouse. We don't know, but this is, this is kind of what's on his menu. Um, and you can see the different arrows, arrows for all the different things that are on here. And it kind of shows what they could eat. So that's what a food web is. 
And again, a few changes shows what did eat what. But 90% of what you eat is lost as heat. Think about that for a second. It's a little less for reptiles because they're cold-blooded, but for us being warm-blooded, most of what we eat is burnt off as heat. We don't use it to grow, to reproduce, to move. We use it just to maintain our body temperature. So let's put that in terms of numbers. Let's imagine that this grass down here had a thousand units of energy. Okay, a thousand units. Ninety percent of that one thousand is lost when the grasshopper eats it. So how much energy does the grasshopper get? Well, a thousand, uh, um, ten percent of a thousand is a hundred. Well, there's a hundred units here. How much did the mouse get? Well, he's losing ninety percent when he eats it, so it's going to go from a hundred down to ten. So then, when the owl eats the mouse, you can imagine it's probably it's going to go down to one. He's going to get ten percent of what the mouse had. So a thousand, a hundred, ten, one. This is a great example of whenever we study ecosystems, we, we tend to look at the food chains and it helps explain why we see what we see. You turn on the Discovery Channel, like an animal plant or something, and it has 10,000 uh, gazelle and zebra and antelope all going across the Serengeti Plains. There's tons and tons of grass, right? And those herbivores are eating the grass, so they, they're getting a lot of energy, so they have, oh, there's like, there, can, there can be a lot of them. But you don't see that many top predators. They're way up on the top of the food chain. By the time the energy gets to them, so much has been lost as heat, it can't support as many. So, so you, you don't see 10,000 lions roaming. You see maybe 100. So it takes about 10,000 zebra to, to feed 100 lions. And additionally, there's other predators there. There's uh, jag, um, um, leopards and cheetahs, hyenas, and so forth all feeding off that food source, but you definitely see uh, a less number of top predators than you do of the herbivores. Another way to think of this is uh, what's physically larger, um, a herbivore or a carnivore? Well, most herbivores, like you think Africa, you got zebras and um, uh, giraffe and rhinos and elephants, and they're huge compared to lions and cheetahs and jaguars, uh, I keep saying jaguars, and, and leopards. Because they're, they're eating from a, such a rich energy source, they can get big. They have the energy to grow massive size. But the carnivores eating from the top, they can't get that big. There's not enough energy available for them to maintain such a large body size. And thank goodness, because I'd hate to see a lion the size of an elephant. That would be very scary. All right. So uh, one of the things in your book is this diagram. And don't worry about all the words in here, just kind of a simple concept. And that's that whenever you die, the nutrients that are inside of you um, get recycled, right? There's a famous quote from Lion King. Um, he says, Simba, when we die, our bodies become the grass, and the antelope eat the grass, and then we in turn eat the antelope, and we're all connected in the great circle of life, right? Well, he's talking about the physical nutrients, the molecules that make up your body. But we don't need just molecules, we also have energy, right? And for mo most of us, it's the, it's, our energy comes from, uh, it starts off from the sun, right? But what happens to the energy? Well, energy can't be created or destroyed. It's not recycled, so it just passes on through and goes out into the universe. And what did Simba tell? Uh, what did Mufasa tell Simba? He said, "Hey, when when I die, I'll be up with the kings of the past up in the stars." Right? His energy passed on through and went out to the universe. And that's essentially what happens uh, um, with us. Our molecules are recycled, but the physical energy we take in is released, and a lot of it back out as heat. Um, uh, and it's, it's, pretty, it's just lost back out into the universe. And it's a pretty cool little concept. So everything can sense and respond to change. So there's this concept called homeostasis, and it's just how organisms keep their internal conditions uh, uh, within certain ranges. Um, homeo is not the same as homo and hetero. Home, uh, uh, let's see, homo means same, hetero means different. Well, this is in between. This is similar, not different, not the same, but just within a similar range. So if you get really, really hot, your body temperature can go up a few degrees. But once you get up to like 103, you start to not do so well, and, and you're probably going to die at that point. Um, don't, don't get a temperature that high. It's bad. Um, but also in the, in the reverse, you could also get cooler, right? But if you get down to like the low 90s, you're going to die of hypothermia, right? So homeostasis is, is our ability to stay within that range. If it were a homostatic, if this is a homostasis, if we were at 98.6 and we went up to 98.7, we would die. Because we would, you know, 
homostasis would mean same state. Well, we're not same state. We are similar states. So thank goodness, right? We have range we can work in. So a good example is your blood glucose levels after a meal. So um, this is an insulin pump that uh, um, attaches to your skin. One of my students a few years ago did a presentation on this that um, he wears an insulin pump and he has the pump that goes into his skin. This one just attaches to the outside. It doesn't actually go inside of you. Um, but his went inside and any time his blood, his, his blood sugar levels went down there, or his blood sugar levels went up rather, he would get a pump of insulin. But he had maintained, you know, hygiene and cleanliness on his, on his stomach where the hole was. This is a new one that actually just attaches to your skin. There's a bulb inside of you that releases the insulin and they're Bluetooth connected together. So whenever this measures a uh, spike in blood sugar, um, it uh, uh, feeds back through this device. It sends a signal telling it to release insulin, and it does. There's not a hole in you. So how do you fill this back up? Well, you simply just do an injection through the skin into the bulb and refill it up with insulin. Um, and uh, it's a great, great way to um, help, help reduce the um, amount of infections that people get when they have insulin pumps. But let's say you go and study, because y'all should be studying, right? When you go study, you eat something. Let's say you bring water and an apple with you. Okay, so here's time, and here's blood glucose levels, so blood sugar levels. So blood glucose spikes as you eat the apple, goes up, okay, but in response, your body's constantly sensing the level of blood sugar, and as the blood sugar goes up, it starts to release insulin. Insulin simply tells your body, hey, start absorbing sugar from the blood. And as it does, your blood sugar level starts to come back down, right? And it doesn't really drop. These two kind of stay more or less in harmony with each other as they come down. We never drop below this line of satiation. So this is like the hunger line, right? Below this, you'd feel hungry and tired. But what happens if you eat like something really, really sugary? So a uh, Coke and a Little Debbie snack cake. They had that all over their face. They were so hungry. They just and their blood sugar level spikes. Well, the insulin that is released by your body is rushing to catch up because it's, it's gone up so high. That sugar is so high. By the time your body starts absorbing um, enough sugar, your insulin level is now above your sugar line. Okay, so all of a sudden the insulin drops off dramatically. Your body just keeps absorbing, keeps absorbing blood sugar, but it it absorbs too much, and you start going below this line of satiation. And what happens? You have a sugar crash. You get really tired, and then you need to pick me up, right? You got to go get something else to eat or something else to snack on because you feel hungry because there's not enough sugar in your blood. Where is it? Well, it's all stored in your body. Okay. Um, usually, that's going to be stored there for a little bit, maybe some glycogen. Uh, in your liver, but for the most part, mm -mm, that's going to turn straight into belly fat. So avoid eating those sugary foods, especially right before nighttime or before, uh, like this, generally after 8 o'clock at night. So eat, eat, that's when you're going to put on your most body weight, eating, uh, getting your, your blood sugar levels to spike that late at night. Your body just goes up, circadian rhythm, we're about to go to sleep, start storing it, and it goes straight to, to belly fat. We don't want to do that.